Previously on Sherlock Holmes Crimes and Punishments. Here it is. This is the place where the stolen plants were exhibited. Thank you. Is there something the matter? Yes, there is. All right, the plants were valuable and rare, but it seems to me that the tragedy that took place here only two days ago has been entirely forgotten already. What tragedy are you referring to? My... the director of Kew Gardens, Mr. Montague Dunn. He died here just two days ago. He... he was my father. I perceive that you are passionate about the Royal Navy. Passionate? No, not really. I like ships, that is all. Are you quite sure? You do not seem to be so interested in plants. It's difficult, that's all. My future is here. It has never been about anything else. And yet, I know that the Royal Naval College rejected your application. Ah, oh, you truly are as clever as they say. Yes, that's correct. And in fact, my father was strongly against the idea. He did his best to ruin my plans, although I almost did succeed. But my dreams were shattered, Mr. Holmes. Thank you, young man. We shall see you again soon. There it is. I am curious if the marble that we found will fit this place. Here it is. The marble fragment that we found in the colonial collection room is what they have in common. It is a bust of Montague Dunn. Speak to you, Martin Hamish. Mr. Hamish, was someone from your family connected with Kew Gardens? Family? No. I'm the only one with a passion for botany. I'm your father. I do not think so. This photograph of you and your father at Kew Gardens suggests the opposite. Ah, but you have no right to. Do tell us more about your father. He was, indeed, the greatest botanist of his time in the British Empire. He worked together with Montague Dunn until the end of his life. He brought me in at the age of 12. Did he get on well with Mr. Dunn? No, I couldn't say that. They expanded Kew Gardens together, that was all. And it was all my father's work, for Dunn always lived the high life. So Mr. Dunn was not helping your father? Oh, yes. He provided the financial support. And as far as he was concerned, that fulfilled his role. But the worst of it was, he declared himself as the master of Kew Gardens. Fame meant nothing to my father. So it was easy for Mr. Dunn to take all the credit. Hmm. There is a bust of Montague Dunn in the nursery. A bust? Oh, that old thing. Further proof of that outrageous ego of his. But why in that room, in particular? Oh, I, I don't know. It has always been there. No, it hasn't. It is strange, because I recovered a fragment of the bust inside the colonial collection room. Really? Oh, well, so I am mistaken. It ought to have been removed during the cleanup. This room is so small. Hmm. Do you know who moved it? I have no idea. 
Surely Mr. Dunn requested it. Do you have any more questions like this? Because fragments of rock are not my responsibility. Evidently. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Hamish. We shall continue our investigation. Okay. Uh... Martin Hamish is eager to become the new director of Kew Gardens. He believes he is deserving of the role and is hopeful of assuming the reputation his father once held there. Martin Hamish hated Montague Dunn, a man who he believed not did little work but received all the praise for the success of Kew Gardens. Martin Hamish had a motive. He believed that he and his father's lives had been ruined by Dunn, who had taken the credit for all of their work. Hamish wished to take over the directorship of Kew Gardens, but he knew that would not be possible with Dunn still alive. Any more clues that go together? Maybe this and that one? After the death of his father, Albert, Na Albert now feels a responsibility to manage Kew Gardens. Montague Dunn thwarted his son's dream of joining the Royal Navy. Albert was humili humiliated by his father on many occasions, most recently the last exhibition at Kew Gardens. Albert had a motive to kill his father, Montague Dunn. Dunn had thwarted Albert's dream of joining the Royal Navy. By killing his father, Albert could have, could have his revenge and eventually succeed in his father's place as a director of Kew Gardens. Okay, so it's different. The story can go differently. Um, and these are the ways it can go. And the deduction. And the final deduction. Still don't know enough. I do have some stuff I need to examine. Oh, this is the draft that she was gonna write to her parents. Dear mother and father, I'm writing this letter with reluctance to ask for your help. My studies and my housing costs have proven to be more expensive than I had anticipated. I fear therefore that I may not be able to manage in the long term. I know that we have had our disagreements in the past, but would you be so heartless as to allow your daughter to fail her studies due to lack of money? Hmm. Oh, excuse me. Okay. So let's go back to our place and examine the chemical and the flask and I think other things. All right. Let us determine just what we have found here. Let us pour liquid from the bottle into a test tube to perform an analysis. This is the bottle that we found hidden at Kew Gardens. Let us use a pipette to take a sample of the liquid and fill a test tube. A colorless, water-based liquid. Quite a strong floral aroma. Holmes? What are you doing? It has a bitter taste. What if it's poisonous? Did you ever see poison stored in enormous jars like that? Anyway, there is a doctor nearby. So, what do you think it is? It is some kind of organic compound. Let us vaporize the liquid and see what happens. I would never taste that. He is so bold. Small colorless crystals. Colorless, tiny crystals that are soluble in water with a floral smell and a bitter taste. Watson, could you pass me that small bottle, please? Of course. Here you are. Uh, Holmes, do you know what it is? 
Wagner's reagent. There was a label on the bottle that you passed to me. No, Holmes. I meant the bottle that we found. Let me add the reagent and see if there is any sediment, and then I shall tell you. I need to take a pipette. Use the same pipette. Okay. Red sediment, just as I suspected. This liquid is of organic origin. It contains some alkaloid. Most likely it is unstable, and that is why there is a quantity of gold dust to prevent contamination. This mixture is probably a fertilizer. Someone was carrying out unusual experiments in the garden's laboratory. Hmm. Okay, let's go to the... A lot of stuff to search up. Um, list of exotic plants, okay. Botany. Only the first three are dangerous. Oh, wait. Particularly form diabolica. Oh, but only under very specific conditions. The plant should react to a process of aggression against which it will issue deadly spores. Here it is. This one. Uh, eighteen eighty nine. The Divine Syndicate Club, followers of the God King Sherwan, situated on forty eight Gros. Grosvenor Street, Charlton Road. Protectors of plants, and more particularly trees, are currently the subject of an administrative investigation. The leaders of this organization are suspected of financial malfeasance. Malficence? Malficence. <laughs> oh, these big words. It may be that this <laughs> I can't talk. It may be that this investigation will lead to charges of, judi of judiciary. Meanwhile, many voices have risen high against this inspection denouncing the state. In fact, this private organization, which has given as its goal the defense and protection of nature, and which incorporates many persons of influence, including political representatives of, of the opposition party. Here it is. Ugh. And here Can't is talk. the Divine Syndicate's address. Perfect. It is time to find out what they have against Montague Dunn. Mm. Mm. Oh, it's a research. All right. Marks and symbols. Yes. The members of the syndicate worship um, Triwan, the God King. They strive to obtain spiritual peace and release themselves from the material world. So generous donations are appreciated. Here it is. Next. Uh, another symbol. Skulls and crossbones. That is not the one I need. Religious. That is not the one I need. Oh, okay. I would not know that. Uh, well, it was in the far pot, so. We are a premium supplier for all your landscape, gardening, and timber requirements. Full range, supply, and delivery of sand, soils, mulches, pots, and anything else you may need. Here it is. Okay. Let's visit them. This place is beautiful, Holmes. Its atmosphere is remarkably soothing. Let us find someone who could help us. Are you doing Tai Chi? Hi! Good 
good day to you, sir. My name is Shul... Shh. I am exalting the sap. A while can you wait. From the trace of elements, and moreover, from the quality of the ambient geotropism, it depends. Therefore, please, mind my gravitropism. Its balance. Do not disturb. Disturbed is most definitely the word. There. Completed is the symbiosis. Welcome, you are. To introduce myself, I shall. I am the Green Grand Mystic. The... the Green Grand Mystic? Himself? This is me. Who am I speaking to? We are two gentlemen who are extremely interested in the uh, uh, vegetation philosophy that is advocated by this establishment. Listening to you, I am. The green grand himself. So funny. We should like to take a look around, to immerse ourselves in the wisdom that emanates from here. Hmm. It is a school of anastomosis, the divine scholastic syndicate for vegetation veneration and meditation. Uh, you may say, the divine syndicate. Glory to the eukaryotic. Only true devotees, those whose hearts are ready to spermatophize in sharing of knowledge, are permitted to physically enter our vegetable kingdom and its wisdom. And to be permitted, you must earn it. Yes. Hmm. We visited Kew Gardens, and we found your symbols on their flower pots. Coincidence, I am thinking. They would scavenge our refuse. It would not surprise me. It was merely an observation. I'm ready. I'm re ready to spur Mophetize. Green Grand Mystic, we are ready to become devotees and gain access to your temple. What is the name of our Lord, our God King? I got our you. Our God King's name is Triwan, Green Grand Mystic. Oh, la, good, good, I like you. Here is the holy key to the wisdom place. Holy donation can you make whenever you so wish. <laughs> Thank you so much. I pray you to taste our fertilizer substance. From the burdens of life, it helps to free. Uh, but of course. Raw sap, it is called. It is near the entrance. I love he said the donation thing so quickly. Like, disclaimer, you can make a donation anytime you want. <laughs> Donations are welcome. <laughs> he is so crazy. <laughs> A bit loony. Well, we will leave you to your meditation. Uh, by the entrance. Yeah, I'm not drinking that. Oh. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. What's this? A fragment of a flower pot. Fragments of a flower pot. It fell down here. Oh, snap. It's the same. Oh, snap. Wait, these are the same pots. Oh, the cute gardens. They've been taking cute garden pots and saying it's the their own. The garden symbol. I knew it. They were phonies. Hey dude, who are you? You came to make a donation? 
Glory to Tree One. No. Oh. This okay. must be Tree One, the Divine Syndicate's god. Hmm. Hmm. Looks horrific. What is this play? Oh God! Move your hand. These really cheesy lanterns. Freaking horrific statue. This door is locked, but I can try to open it. Okay. Yeah. These instruments are used for smoking opium. This substance is an alkaloid, the same as in the bottle we found in the bushes at Kew Gardens. This cabinet is full of chemicals. They are the same as the ones we found in the laboratory at Kew Gardens. Hmm. That would be enough to perform the most difficult of chemical experiments. A vast amount of opium. Are these are missing plants? A tropical plant. Nothing of interest. A tropical plant. Nothing of interest. Wait, but what if these are our plants? A tropical A tropical why are you telling me to examine it if it's nothing of interest? A tropical. A tropical. These three plants are identical to the ones shown at the exhibition. I shall take them. Just put them in my pocket. Put them all in there. Put them in my jacket. Um, okay. Some of the plants that were stolen from the exhibition can prove fatal to humans. Um, Montague Dunn inhaled a virulent vicious poison that was intended to kill him. The killers may be those who stole the exotic plants, including the deadly species, from the last exhibition at Kew Gardens. It appears that the deadly plants, the alkaloid, and the caterpillars are somehow connected. Set up the alkaloid from a chemical lab laboratory in the caterpillars and perform an experiment with the deadly plants. The ones I have in my pocket? You mean those? Okay. Uh, do I need to stay here any longer? I hope I don't. Find out what the divine syndicate is concealing. Find out who killed Mr. Montague Dunn. I hope I don't need to be here anymore. They're so crazy. Oh, I can talk to him about this. Okay, let's talk to the 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 great grand mystic himself. Most 
venerated mystic of all times <laughs> do you have friends at Kew Gardens none not worthy there Nevertheless, we have seen Kew Gardens flower pots in your yard. How could they happen to be there? What? Our sacred place you permitted yourself to search? Sacrilege. No, oh, really now. There was a theft of plants at Kew Gardens a matter of days ago. And we believe the pots we found here may be connected with it. Please tell us, were you involved? No. Those plants were ours. They had stolen them from us. How so? Uh, their director. Dump, I believe. Done. Yes, that's, that's what I said. He borrowed from us three of our sisters for the exhibition at his green fly infested gardens. But he never gave them back to us. Excuses and imbecility. So we went in and saved them. I see. So, if you stole those rare plants from them, then it means... Ah, I get it. Bravo, Holmes. I think the case is solved. No, we did not steal. We saved. Well, as a matter of fact, we were unable to find our three plants. I beg your pardon. And yet, you took all of the exotic plants from the stand. They had disappeared. It was the least we could do. They stole our sisters, and so we stole theirs. Well, we will leave you to your meditation. He's so crazy. Okay. Green, oh, Green Grand Mystic, not Great Grand. Ah, such a weird title. The Green Grand Mystic told us that when they stole the plants in the Kew Gardens, they were unable to locate three. Some of the plants that were stolen from the exhibition can prove fatal to humans. Oh, whoops, whoops, this one. Um, this one. Three days before Montague Dunn died, the Divine Syndicate stole all the plants from the Kew Gardens exhibition, claiming that a number of these belonged to them. What? Oh. Idiot. Okay. The Divine Syndicate stole all plants from the exhibition, including the deadly species. They could have used them in order to murder Montague Dunn. The Divine Syndicate stole all but the deadly plants from the exhibition. I don't think so. I don't... I think he's more obsessed with his plants and opium than to concern himself with killing someone. He just wants his plants back. Dude just wants his plants, plants, opium, and donations. That's what he wants. I have a feeling it's... For some reason, I feel like it's Margaret. Like, Margaret is somehow involved in all of this. Yeah. Okay. Uh, oh no, 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 Watson, what are you doing? Stop that right now. Psh, stop it. <laughs> this green grand mystic fellow seems rather suspicious, Holmes. What should we do next, Holmes? Well, you can stop doing that. As a next step, what are you doing? What are you doing? Oh, jeez. Oh, my God. Toby, make him stop. Toby, chew up more of his books. Make him stop. Oh, my God. I can't look at him. I can't look at him. According to the deadly plants information, in order to perform our experiment, we will need fertilizer and food. Caterpillars should do nicely. According to the... I don't have caterpillars. According to the deadly plants information. God damn it. Here. Okay.
Wait, what the freak is not here? Oh, the one cage door I didn't open. Caterpillars. They are raised as food for certain plants. Let's take them. Perfect, Watson. We can begin our experiment. Let's go back. What is he doing again? Hope it's not a daily thing. I imagine that one of these plants would be capable of releasing a toxic vapor. I need to find out exactly how it could be done. I shall begin now. Watson, if you are at all optimistic to have dinner this evening, then I'd recommend that you put on the gas mask. I find the behavior of predators utterly fascinating. Oh. How interesting. What a strong and effective defensive mechanism. This is a strange and unusual plant. A carnivorous plant. A prickly plant. Mm. Well, I swap these two put it here will you react really how do i make you react i think What if I do this? This plant seems to have had no reaction. Okay, this will eat anything. I was thinking if this ate capital off of this and it um, released its spikes, it would make this you know, react because of the spikes. Maybe not. I don't know what difference this would make, but okay. This plant. Okay. You like this? Nothing. Oh, I didn't know how to use this. Okay. It appears to open after being soaked with alkaloid. Got it. Okay, now will it work? Toxic gas with spores. Extraordinary. What about Toby? Did you put a gas mask on him? The plants would be capable of killing only if they were directly next to the victim and stimulated at precisely the right moment. 
Let us take our caterpillars to the colonial collection room. We may see things more clearly there. It is too early, Watson. Our suspects will be there. Let us investigate Kew Gardens one more time and ask some questions. Hmm. It was a complex process to prepare the deadly plants. The plant combination had to be placed close by the victim and triggered at the precise moment. The vine syndicate left the plants at Kew Gardens in order to murder Montague Dunn at a later date. Someone stole the deadly plant before the deadly before the vine syndicate were able to. I think it's this. I think it's that. Are these connected? They are. Knowledge Miss White acquired at the university might not be enough to guarantee the correct reaction of the deadly plants. Miss White had the biological knowledge to stimulate the deadly plants. Well, yeah, she knows because we saw in the uh, uh, her recorded record that she said, "Oh, due to these experiments, we know that plants can react under certain circumstances and have a mind of its own." So she knows. Whoa! Margaret White killed Montague Dunn. Her professional ambition and personal situation had been damaged by the breakup with Dunn. Condemn Miss White. Miss White is a dangerous woman, very capable of carrying out an elaborate murder. When she realized she was unable to make further monetary gain from Dunn, she advanced her, her affections to Albert. She deserves the rope. Whoa! Miss White is a desperate woman in debt, resigned to risk consorting to with wealthy gentlemen. When Dunn cast her aside, her life stopped. She killed him in desperation. She deserves a second chance. Um, I'm going to continue. Definitely. Even Holmes said I should go back to Kew Gardens. And investigate some more. Okay. Hey, do you have anything to say for yourself? Can you tell me if you saw Mr. Montague Dunn on the day of his death? Yes, of course. I met him, and we went to see Albert, his son, at around half past nine. He appeared quite calm. What were you doing on the morning of the accident? After paying multiple visits to Albert, I had a little talk with Miss White. Then I returned to my desk to complete some paperwork. Suddenly I observed that Mr. Dunn was not feeling well, so I ran immediately to fetch Albert. I clearly remember that it was around half past ten, for I was late that morning. Thank you, Mr. Hamish. We shall continue our investigation. Your father's death does seem highly suspicious. What were your movements here on that day? Suspicious? Well, I was working in the seed house, taking care of a uh, lyce uh, something, or, or Lear Pontus, or... No, wait. Ah, oh, these Latin names. And I spent so many hours trying to memorize them. Did you see your father that day? Yes. He came here with Mr. Hamish for his weekly visit. There was nothing unusual about that. And then? Nothing. They stepped out to the backyard. It was perhaps 20 minutes before 10 o'clock. Then about 10 minutes later, I saw my father heading for the dry tropics room while Mr. Hamish returned here. And Mr. Hamish and Miss White, what were they both doing that morning? Mr. Hamish visited me a couple of times. I also saw him returning from talking with Miss White, and that was at 10 minutes past 10. But then he ran back here to me, to tell me that my father was feeling unwell. We hurried across to the water lily room, and I found my father lying dead on the floor. Oh my god. 
Thank you, young man. We shall see you again soon. Can you tell me what Mr. Dunn was doing upon the day of his death? I can, but there is nothing very special to say. I was in the laboratory when I saw Mr. Dunn heading towards me. Tuesday is the day of his weekly visit. It was supposed to be at nine, but he was ten minutes late, as usual. And then? Well, he came in to say good morning. Then I saw him spend two or three minutes by the plants outside the laboratory. After that, he ran out in the direction of the nursery, where Mr. Hamish was working. He was always in a rush during the inspection, you see. I would pity anyone who stood in his way. And that was the last time you saw him? Yes. I stayed in the laboratory until 20 minutes to 11, when I heard the cries of Albert to Mr. Hamish from the large glass house. I joined them as soon as I could. For I knew that something must be very wrong. What exactly were you doing in the laboratory? I was recording an experiment for my thesis. I only stopped my work once when Mr. Hamish visited me briefly around ten o'clock. You say you were recording an experiment when the tragedy occurred. Might I listen to the role? Oh, certainly. Please do. You will find it in the laboratory. It is number 320. Uh, thank you, miss. Everyone has gone, Holmes. The way is clear. When Montague Dunn was standing close by the plants, the caterpillars were released and caused the deadly spores to activate. Panicking and likely already half asphyxiated, Montague Dunn started back and knocked over the bust. He rushed to the door, but it was locked. He had to force it open with his shoulder. We already know the outcome. Montague Dunn collapsed and died not far from the pool. Well, it is time to perform our experiment on the ventilation system. Ah. The caterpillars could only fall from the ventilation duct. Our caterpillars are in place. I'll activate the ventilation system so that they fall down. Watson, stay here and observe. All right, Holmes. I know what the ventilation system is. Before starting the engine, the power is on. The engine cannot. The engine has started. The ventilation system is working. We'll stop there.
Before I activate the fan, I need to check if the interior of the colonial collection room can be seen from here. Okay. From here, we are unable to see the interior of the colonial collection room. Oh, there's still stuff to see here. Materials for college. These leather gloves are new and of good quality. They do not appear to have been used. This place serves as Albert's office. A book about ships. Nothing at all to do with plants. Okay. Nursery. Uh, there was a room that I can see into the colonial place. It's his office. Here. We can see the interior of the colonial collection room from this window. Okay. Excellent. This ventilation fan is working. Let us see if I can activate the other one. Perfect. Now I just need to find Watson to check the result. It works perfectly, Holmes. Bravo. Now if you could just help me to get rid of these caterpillars. Perfect. Now we know how the murder of Montague Dunn was carried out by activating both Albert's and Mr. Hamish's fans. But only from Mr. Hamish's workplace would it be possible to see when Montague Dunn entered the colonial collection room. Thank you.